All right, let's use what we learned to create a patch. Starting off with an initialized version of AL1, I'm going to pop over to the oscillator section, and I'll choose square waves for both. And the mixer, I'm going to turn them both down to 50. And then in the filter section, I'm going to go ahead and route it to parallel. Let me jump back over to the oscillator mixer and route oscillator 2 to filter B. Now in the filter section, I'm going to choose the multi-filter for filter 1, and I'll leave filter B, I should say filter A, not filter 1, uh, I'll leave filter B as a low-pass filter. For the multi-mode filter, I'm going to choose manual for both modes, and for manual 1, I'm going to have the dry signal at plus 99, and I'll have the dry signal at negative 99. In other words, this is a phase flipped version. Right now, we're only listening to mode 1, so we just get the summation of these two square waves. Um, and then if I crossfade, we of course get a phase cancellation. Since then, we're getting the phase flipped version going through filter A being summed with the normal square wave going through filter B, which cancel each other out at the output. So I can uh, offset the phase of the first oscillator by like um, uh, 20 degrees, which gives me not a full phase cancellation, but this little thing. That way I can use the crossfade to change the timbre. Now before I um, actually start modulating this, I want to pop back over to the mixer and I want to check out what ring mod sounds like. So I'm going to turn this up. And uh, we get this kind of interesting waveform here. Um, I'm going to see what it sounds like with the other modes. AM is, of course, just going to increase the volume of oscillator 2, which is kind of nifty. Uh, rectify is not going to do anything. It's only going to let us hear oscillator 2, since um, rectifying a square wave just essentially cancels out the waveform. Remember, Rectify um, uh, flips the bottom half of the waveform to the top. I should really be showing that on the oscilloscope. Um, and thus you would only, you know, since because of the shape of a square wave, you'd only end up with a straight line, which will sound like nothing. So you're really only listening to oscillator 2 when you're using the ring modulator in Rectify with a square wave. Uh, the last mode is Clip. And I think clip sounds interesting. Um, that's essentially creating like a unipolar or a what's called a square plus waveform. And uh, yeah, let's hear what that sounds like when we crossfade. You know, honestly, it doesn't really sound very exciting. Um, and it actually shouldn't because we're not listening to the uh, things that are actually doing the phase cancellation. Um, flipping the phase of the ring modulation, of course, isn't going to really do anything. I could put this, um, I could route this to both filters, but I think I want to just leave it at filter one because later on I like actually filtering off oscillator two. Um, but yeah, you'll see. So now let's hear what it sounds like. Much better. Cool. So let's start to add a little bit of movement here. I'll choose LFO1. Stop it. I'll choose LFO1 for this. And let me put that intensity on 50. And I'm going to go ahead and choose LFO2 for this. I'm not going to put the intensity on just yet. Um, let's just hear how LFO1 is affecting oscillator 1. I want to choose a saw. Let's take key sync off. So um, it's not per key. If it's per key, then you can get things that are out of time, but if it's uh, monophonic LFO, they'll never be out of time. Um, I'm going to put the tempo sync on. You can leave it at quarter notes. So that's good. Um, now I'll go ahead and do the same thing for oscillator 2. Let's put that at 50. And I'll choose again a saw. And again, I'll put it the MIDI tempo sync with a different note value. 
So now we get kind of like a cool polyrhythm thing going on. I can go ahead and make this a bit more plucky. Um, let me uh, actually disable this real fast so we can really hear the pluckiness. So this would be more sustain, more plucky. And then let's do the, uh, the same thing for oscillator two. Choose LFO two. And we'll set the kind of pluckiness here. I like that. Now let's put them both back on. Super plucky timber. I'm gonna go back to the filter. Let's hear what crossfading does. Cool, so I'm gonna put this at 50. And then I'm gonna control it with the step sequencer. Put that intensity at 99. And then the step sequencer, I'm gonna lower it down to six steps. And again, I'm gonna take key sync off. So it's like per timbre instead of per voice. And then for every other one, I'm gonna have it at uh, 50. And then I'll have it on minus 50 for the ones beyond that. Cool. And let's hear what that sounds like. Let's add more rhythmic interest. Cool. Now remember the other uh, oscillator, oscillator two, is routed to filter B. So if I close this, actually, we're only hearing oscillator one versus oscillator two. We're also taking away the kind of phase cancellations that are going on between the oscillators by closing this filter. So I'm gonna put this at 50 and I'm gonna go ahead and modulate it via LFO three. Put that on 50 and then jump over to my LFOs. LFO three, I'll leave on a triangle, again, taking key sync off, putting, putting MIDI tempo sync and having it on whole notes. From here, I want to increase the attack. And the release. Cool, so we're kind of creating like a little pad sound. Um, let's see, where else? Let's uh, add some unison, because that always makes things sound cool. effects I'm just gonna throw on some overb that little added dimension cool so we've used the multi filter albeit in kind of an unconventional fashion where I'm only using it to uh, flip the phase of oscillator one and that's helping to change the timbre of the sound um, and we're also adding in a bit of ring modulation in uh, clip mode to create a kind of uh, square plus and make that phase modulation like a bit uh, more flavorful. And uh, thus we've created this uh, complex moving sound. So that's it for this AL1 series. Hopefully that was enjoyable. And uh, yeah.
Thanks for watching. Bye.